All right, so while we're waiting for a few others here, you just to let you know, you are in the right place. You are here for Clients by Christmas, how to generate leads and sales by literally by the end of the year while reception proofing your agency, your digital agency for 2023. So you are in the right spot if you want to get um, more clients by Christmas. You're in the right spot if you're a digital agency. My name is Dave Albano. I'm CEO and founder of uh, Joza Marketing. We also have Stephen uh, Slato here from Globital. Uh, we'll do a little bit of a, a bigger intro later in a bit. Uh, in the meantime, while we're waiting for a few more, just in the Q and A, curious to see what you're hoping to get out of this session. What's your biggest reason for being here? Just uh, type it in as a as a question, and we'll uh, try and answer it as we go. Mm -hmm. Would love to hear your thoughts. Why did you guys show up? Obviously, to get clients by Christmas seems that hook <laughs> certainly worked, and we will show you how to do that. That's not just Bluff, and uh, we're going to show you some practical yeah, strategies, yeah. tactics yeah, on I'm how to do that. Very excited about this, actually. This uh, For those who, who didn't pick it up, you know, proprietary data, we've got some real intelligence to share with you guys, which is super. Um, uh, it's it's not just, as Dave said, not just bluff. It's uh, real, real stuff over the years uh, generated. We know what industries to target, what campaigns, etc. We'll share all that with you. So very exciting. Absolutely. And Kelly says she's here to get clients, lead gen for SEO. Awesome. Uh, why don't we go in? I'm going to dive right in. And I, yeah, I don't awesome. like uh, I, I don't like punishing those who are on time. So let's not yeah, wait. 100%. Any longer. So thanks, guys, for showing up. Uh, feel free to play full on. Uh, let's make this interactive. This isn't just us talking at you. It's talking with you. Let's have a dialogue. Uh, Sam wants some inspiration for growth heading into Q1 2023. We can absolutely do that. Kelly is a male. Yeah. Sorry about that, Kelly. <laughs> oh, is that, sure, sure. That's a big stuff up in California these days, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> All good. All right. Sounds good. All right. Well, let's uh, <laughs> let, let's dive in. Like I said, I don't want to uh, punish those who are on time. So what okay. we're going to go over, we got some, some uh, three keys. Clients by Christmas, how we're going to get them. Uh, business intelligence, like uh, Steve said, and um, how to recession-proof your business for the anticipated slowdown in 2023. So we want to get on all those big things a little more specifically. Here's what we're going to cover. Uh, and, and just right out of the gate, there's no pitching here at all. We have nothing to sell. We're doing this because we believe a rising tide lifts all ships. Uh, we're agencies too. You guys are agencies. If we can add value to you, we love the trickle down effect. You can add value to your clients and we all win together. So I uh, just wanted to diffuse that right out of the gate. I know a lot of uh, webinars or trainings, they say, oh, can I get your permission to offer you this thing at the end? None of that. We want to offer you a gift and a bonus instead. Uh, no strings attached. So I uh, just wanted to get that out of the way. Why this is going to be so important to your business and why now uh, we're going to give you five compelling reasons to actually increase your ad budget for the end of the year and why you want to tell your clients to do the same. So hopefully uh, without the turn off, by the way, the, the, uh, do the standard turn off all distractions and get rid of your Facebooks and your phones and all that fun stuff. I do encourage you to get out a notepad though, take lots of notes because you can use a lot of what we're going to tell you here to pivot over to your clients and say, Hey guys, here's why you you should be increasing your ad spends too, and you can upsell them that way. So we're going to give you the reasons on how and why to do that. And then, and then they may push back and say, oh, objection this, objection that. We're going to actually uh, handle some of the common objections out there and how to uh, respond in their place. And then we're also going to go over that uh, exclusive business intelligence that Steve mentioned at the top. Um, and this is about the best businesses to target during the holidays. I'm super excited about this part because this is exclusive to you guys. Uh, if you're not on this, this training right now, no one has ever seen this ever before. And it's proprietary to Globital. They work with hundreds of agencies all over the globe. So it's based on their own internal data and business intelligence. And we're going to share that with you. So we're pretty excited about that. Uh, and then actually not just increase or protect your revenues, but actually grow it 
instead when everyone is taking a step back during the holidays typically we're going to give you an actual five-step tactical game plan to virtually guarantee you clients by christmas so excited about that uh and how to prepare for the coming recession like i mentioned and gonna give you believe it or not a thousand dollar bonus just for attending so we're gonna uh, tell you how you can get that at the uh, at the end. So attendance does mean the whole thing. So stay with us. We're going to try and do this over the course of an hour, depending on how there uh, how many questions there may be. We're you know um, maybe uh, we might spill over the hour mark. Maybe go for ninety minutes, uh, depending on like I say your your questions, insights, all that fun stuff. Uh, and. Before we dive in though, who are we? Um, I am uh, known uh, in some, some circles, especially in the digital marketer world, in the global world, uh, maybe not so much. So I myself, my name is Dave Albano. I am uh, here in sunny Calgary, Alberta, uh, <laughs> home of our Canadian Rockies. So I am a high altitude mountaineer. I like to, uh, to scale things in more ways than one, businesses and mountains. And I'm the CEO and founder of josamarketing.com. I operate as a fractional CMO. I'm great at funnel strategy, all that fun stuff, business advice. Uh, that's actually how I'm acting in the capacity with Globital. With uh, Steve, I'm actually their fractional CMO. I, I'm a certified partner with Digital Marketer. And on their faculty, I do a lot of their trainings and certifications, trainer, speaker, coach, uh, mastermind, mentor, all that fun stuff. If you've been in the marketing world uh, for any length of time, you may recognize this guy, Ryan Dice. He's the CEO and founder, co-founder of Digital Marketer. I like to hang out with him. He's invited me on the uh, Traffic and Conversion Summit stage, one of the largest marketing conferences on planet Earth. And I hang out with this guy. I've actually had the pleasure of interviewing a Gary V. And I've won a few awards here and there, including the, was actually the world's first certified digital marketing professional. And I was just invited to be a mentor in the world's best uh, marketing mastermind on the planet. So uh, pretty exciting stuff. Uh, happy to be here and share uh, what little nuggets I have and marbles rolling around in my head. But enough about me. Over on to the man of the hour, Stephen Slato, affectionately known as Steve Slots, as you can see there. He is our chief revenue officer at Global uh, Marketing and... What Steve does is so underrated. He's kind of like the man behind the scenes. You got the CEO of a company, they're the visionaries, and Steve makes the world go around in the global uh, ecosystem. Steve, how many employees you guys uh, have now? You're getting up there, right? Yeah, no, we've got about 200, 250 or so, um, probably in total about 260 uh, in total around the world. Um, obviously, uh, fulfillment done. Um, all over the place, Pakistan, South Africa, you know, we, we, wherever we can get the best, uh, the best resources at the most affordable rates for agencies, that's our goal. So that's sort of, um, yeah, we sort of everywhere. And well, and, you know, approaching 300 employees globally, there are nine different countries around the world, including I'm up in Canada, in the US, of course, uh, Australia, New Zealand, UK, South Africa, Singapore, these guys are everywhere. And uh, Global, of course, offers a wholesale digital marketing services to uh, agencies like yourself. Uh, I'm honored to be uh, to be here with Steve and and uh, partnering with uh, with them. And he also runs not just a kick-ass company, but he is also the host of some amazing uh, Facebook groups dedicated just to digital agencies. Uh, if you are in the uh, UK or South Africa, the Digital Agency Cowork Collective is especially for you. Um, there is a QR code if you want to join that one. If you're in either of those locales, you can hold your phone up to the screen and that'll allow you to join that or maybe just take a screenshot of this uh, page and do it later or just look up Digital Agency Cowork Collective. Uh, and then um, he runs another one with other 3,100 digital agency owners called the Digital Marketer Dream Team. Another QR code for you. That one services North America, Australia, New Zealand, all the other uh, English-speaking countries other than UK and South Africa. So if you're so inclined, feel free to join those groups. And Steve does regular trainings inside those groups. He goes live, live all the time, drops his insights and wisdom all um, with the singular goal to help you guys yeah okay um, enough about us why are we even doing this in the first place hmm well we've all heard about the big 
R word. So that being said, the whole recessing thing, uh, Steve, you want to, I'm going to hand it over to Steve here and he's going to say a few words about the R word. Yeah, cool, Dave. Thank and awesome, man. Thank you so much for the for the intro. And guys, it's really great to, to have everybody with us. Um, you know, as Dave says, I'm really excited to share this stuff with you because we are we are in 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 um we are definitely up for, up against it now as digital agencies. The coming, despite what you what you might think, and despite what um people are saying in the news, it's quite funny. I was saying to Dave, you know, I was looking for the doom and gloom in the in the news to put into the slideshow so that we can say, hey, guys, recession is here. And, the truth is, ironically, I mean, it's all political. We all know how politics gets. But the reality is that for the most part, most people believe that we're not actually yet in a recession. You know, these are the criteria of a recession, as we know. We're not theoretically in a recession right yet, but there is definitely, definitely a lot of um, foreshadowing and a lot of um, warning coming about, hey, guys, don't take this don't take this lightly. Think about this very seriously, especially about your business. It's coming 2023, at least some form or another. Some are saying it's going to be bad. Some are saying it's not, it's not going to be good. But the reality is actually right ahead of us is, is the client's, is Christmas, the slowdown period of Christmas. And that's actually what we want to talk about today is how do we actually make sure that it, what, what we can think about the holiday season as being a small little recession, things slow down. Uh, belts get tightened for two or three months and, and potentially that knocks on to the rest of the year it really stops our momentum as agency owners going into the year the reality is it's not really the point whether there's a recession or not times are getting tougher regardless of where you are in the world i was saying to some friends the other day i hope i host a podcast with some mates it's completely unbusiness oriented in fact it's quite like the opposite but we were actually laughing we were saying you know the reality is there isn't a country in the world these days where you can actually sit and say yeah cool we're fine life's good i'm not worried about inflation i'm worried about the, the fuel price i'm not worried about heating my home everywhere is getting hit every everywhere is, is taking a knock at the moment these are the numbers on, on obviously inf on the interest rates we know that inflate from an inflation perspective things are going up so life is life is getting tough wherever we are in the world and we as agency owners need to start thinking about that um we we, we we've got a a real challenge ahead of us especially at this time because we're at the mercy a lot of the time as agency owners at the mercy of what our clients um, the decisions that they make. If they decide to start pausing campaigns going into Christmas, or they decide to start not doing any work, that that can knock us off. The really interesting thing that I looked at, as I say, the, the, the signs of recession, people are saying we're in a recession, not really happening at the moment, but definitely the big guys like Jeff Bezos, one of the things that he's saying at the moment is, you know, he's going on a whole big um, um, push around holding your cash and delaying big purchases. It's one of the messages he's putting out there. Particularly this one and Tim, Tim Cook, the next slide there, Dave, talking about the wave of layoffs. Both of these absolute titans of business are talking about particularly around staffing. And I mean, I, I know that this is a really sensitive thing for me because this is what we do for digital agencies. We give them resources. We give them staffing so that they don't have to do it themselves. And this time, this time in the holiday period as we slow down and potentially slow down is we know that agencies take strain around should I bring in that web designer? What if I what if I what if I want to get some work done over the holidays? There are people, there are solutions out there. Hopefully, we'll give you some of those today. But um, this is a time where we're looking to kind of slow down and 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 um, we'll slow down hiring and start really thinking deliberately about what costs we have in our agencies and how we can take care of them. Um, yeah. So, uh, Dave, what's next there? So this this uh, you know this slide when I showed it to Dave, he had a bit of a, a laugh about it because he was like what's a bitch agency, bro? And I was like, listen, let me, <laughs> let me break it down for you. And, and, and I'll kind of explain it to you. And this, this ironically, is, uh, you, you'll see the, the screenshots on the, on the, um, on the screen there are actually taken from lives that I do in the, in the community, particularly the DACC, the digital agency co-work collective. Um, a bitch agent, I'll, I'll break it down to the very bare minimum. You know, it's very much about a mindset. So Dave, I actually don't even know if you knew this about me, but I'm actually a, a cancer survivor. I was a, I was, a, I had ah, survived no, cancer when I was a kid. I was, yeah, I was 12 years old and I was diagnosed with a brain tumor. And it really was a fundamental thing in my life that really changed my way of thinking. And it's something that I've carried throughout my life about attitude and mindset to life. And I've brought that into our community there where we talk about the difference between a bitch agency and a boss agency. Very simply put, it's, it's all about mindset. It's all about you as an agency owner. What kind of attitude and mindset do you have, not just about your agency, but about life? 
for me, and I always give this as a bit of an explanation, if you get into the community, go look up at the pin, one of the pin videos, I talk about what's the difference between the two. And a bitch agency to me is one whose owner is just completely full of excuses, can never seem to make things work. It's always somebody else's fault. It's um, it, it, There's always something that's going wrong for them. And 100% of the time when I work with those kinds of agencies and I'm on a call with them and they're telling me these things, 100% of the time, it's because of their mindset. It's because of the, they're bringing it on themselves. This is not a, yes, life's, life's tough, 100% around us. Things go wrong. Clients pull out. Uh, resources um, quit. Lots of things go wrong. P clients don't pay. 100% of the time, how we react to that is, is actually what's going to be the reality, not the reality of what's just happened. So that for me is what a bitch agency is. A boss agency on the other on the other hand is the kind of agency who rolls up their sleeves and takes the bull by the horns and, and like absolutely 100% of the time makes things work. As tough as it is, as crap as it is, as competitive as it is. I'm not saying the digital world is not a competitive place. We all know it is. But as, as tough as it is, they roll up their sleeves and they get it done. And that's a boss agency. And that's the kind of mindset that we're trying to push here today because Yes, it's now what the 17th of November. We're about to go into the slowdown, potentially into December, January, even sometimes even February. We're about to go into this real slow period. And for most of us human beings, no matter what business you're in, this is a time to go, oh, cool, man. I can just relax and take it easy. But what if you're an agency owner who's paying people's salary? You've got a team of three people or 10 people or 20 people. What if you're, you're paying your own salary? You're a one man show and you want to just get the job done. This is a time where you can't actually afford to just throw your hands up and go, oh, yeah, it's fine. My clients are going to my clients are going to pause their campaigns. I'll just live with it. I'll just I'll just have to go into to December and take a break. We're just saying in this train. That's why. And the fact that you guys showed up says everything. You guys are boss agencies. You are a boss because you showed up to this training. You said, I want to know more. I want to know the tactics. I want to know the intelligence so that as I go into the end of November, go into December, I can make better decisions, more strategic decisions that can see me pick up and blow it out of the water over December, January, February, while my competitors all go on holiday and chill. So well done, pat on the back, you guys nailed it. And this is exactly what we're going to show you today. Some real hardcore concrete things that you can do today to take your, your boss agency mentality, which you've already got, and actually practically put some stuff in place to make it work for yourself. So well done, guys. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. And here is even more reason. Not that you just not just show up, but here are some more reasons on why and how you too can be a boss. Now, let's first uh, bust some myths because everyone thinks that, uh, oh, it's near the end of the year. It should be, you know, slowing down. It's, uh, you know, the year is, is um, winding down for things. Well, 40% of businesses actually generate their entire year's worth our revenue in the, um, the the Christmas months, okay, the holiday months, forty wow. percent, almost half of their annual revenue is generated during the holidays. Five, that is the number of reasons I'm going to deliver to you right now on why you should be increasing your ad budget during the holidays and tell your clients to do the same. So here's where, if you haven't started already, here's where you want to start taking some notes because you can use these same reasons to deliver to your clients. Say, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Client, uh, I think you should really be increasing your ad spend over the holiday season. Here's why. Reason number one, competitive edge. Okay, if you're not doing this, guess what? You're going to be losing market share because the other boss agencies that are increasing their ad spend, they're going to rise to the top. They're putting the pedal down. They're not putting the brakes on. They're actually increasing their ad spend because they want to rise above the noise. A lot of other people, their competitors are backing off. You can actually take back and, uh, and achieve some market share here because other agencies are being the bitch agencies like Steve mentioned, right? They're not being the boss. Right. So competitive edge, increase your market share. You can tell your clients to do the same. And that ties into shopping trends. It's the holiday season. After all, we have Black Friday. We have the American Thanksgiving. Uh, we have when does uh, Amazon do their prime days? I mean, there's all kinds of trends around the, the holiday season. We have, of course, Christmas coming up. And what is Christmas, especially Black Friday? What do they have? They have deadlines. Right. So the shopping trends are that people are expecting to buy, right? And because of that, 
they they it's the the holiday shopping season and <laughs> i think we're all guys on this call right now any girls i don't know oh yeah oh yeah that sounds like girl. <laughs> <laughs> anyway the reason i point that out is i'm guilty about this last minute purchases who's ever been on christmas eve still shopping for the to put stuff under the tree guilty as charged i have absolutely been that uh, that guy and some studies suggest 70 percent of guys in particular wait to the last minute especially to buy their purchases christmas being the biggie of course and um so you want to take advantage of those trends and then there's anticipatory advertising people are not just the shopping trends but people are actually expected to be advertised too they're looking for the black friday specials they're looking for the christmas specials right they're looking for all these holiday specials so not only are they looking to be advertised too we as advertisers should be anticipating to advertise more too not just for the upcoming holiday season but the post holiday events like after Christmas sales events. I'm up here in Canada. Our biggest uh, sales day by far before Black Friday came along was this thing called Boxing Day. And if you're in the Commonwealth and the UK, uh, do you have Boxing Day down in South Africa, Steve? We do, yeah. I, I'm, I, as far as I know, as far as I'm concerned, that time of year is just about uh, switching off and having a, a break. So everything is <laughs> It was our just... biggest sale day of the year. And it was December 26th, the day after Christmas. Uh, and then, of course, because it's the end of the year, a lot of merchandisers want to liquidate their, their holiday stash. And then don't forget, a lot of people get gift cards. Gift cards are hugely popular these days. Those go under the trees and then huh, the, the Christmas trees, and then they take their, their uh, Christmas gift cards and they want to spend them while they have the time off between Christmas and New Year's. Okay. So there's a whole bump you can have the post holiday season as well. So don't forget about that anticipatory advertising. Okay. Merchandising. This is a great time if you're merchandising or a retailer to streamline or liquidate your inventories, right? So if you have, you know, uh, warehouses or maybe you're a book retailer, whatever it is, think of seasonal businesses, especially, right? Look at all the, the, um, everyone's, uh, the retailers are all pumping out Christmas trees and holiday decorations. Well, after that, what happens with those? They want to push them out after Christmas uh, is coming on. They're, you know, selling them hard to liquidate their inventories in prep for the, uh, the new stuff that's going to come out the following year. So another great reason, especially for your, any merchandising clients out there. And then of course, don't forget about the tax advantages. It is your end. Now, full disclosure, full disclaimer, we are not accountants. This is not tax advice. We got to put up the, uh, <laughs> the, the standard uh, disclaimer out there, but talk to your accountant, talk to your CPA. There are absolutely tax advantages and deductions you can take by driving home your advertising budgets, increasing your ad budgets now because you can write them off and decrease your taxes for this year so it doesn't spill over into the next calendar year. I love this quote. I borrowed this quote from this article where I uh, grabbed this from. Whether you're managing a major retail enterprise or if you're an independent contractor or small business owner, plan on allotting more resources, not less guys, more resources to the end of the calendar year. This will help you and your company uh, compete with business rivals, circumvent consumer shopping trends, <laughs> sound familiar, all the stuff we just talked about, and optimize your business-related deductions for the coming tax season. That's from the authority marketing guy, he calls himself, Stuart A. Alexander. Now, when you go back to your clients and you say, hey, increase your ad spend, guys, or you know, increase your, your marketing efforts, you're going to get some pushback, most likely objection handling how do you handle those objections steve's going to go over some of the most common ones and we're uh happy to uh take any questions in the q a about objections that you guys might hear and how we might be able to handle them 
Steve. Yeah, uh, yeah, hundred percent. And 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 if you guys wouldn't mind, I'd let us know in the Q and A right now. Sorry that the chat's not working, guys. We, Dave and I did do a test run of this, but obviously we were both panelists, so we didn't know that the chat wasn't working. But um, I think right, really, you know, let us know there. What are some of the objections that you guys are, are seeing and getting that you do get at this time of year? We we know, I know, um, and Dave knows. You know, we speak to a lot of agency owners, and we know what kind of um, what we hear most commonly. So we've tried to kind of look over some of the um, uh, some of the most common ones that you you may get. Um, some of the the um, yeah, Dave, hit next there. Let's just take a look and bring it up on the screen. So, agency owners, and, and this is one of the most frustrating things for me is when I do when I do talk to an agency owner and they um, they you know I'm talking to them and and I'm talking about this kind of slowdown November December period and they immediately the 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 most common thing that they tell me that they get from from their clients is hey my industry shuts down in december and they a lot of agencies are just quite happy to just turn around and go oh okay well cool we'll chat again in january is that cool and then you're kind of set up a meeting for january and dude tell me that that doesn't happen put up your hand and tell me that doesn't happen i won't believe you you know it is a common common thing that we hear from agencies so so what we hope to give you right here is just some things for, and ways for you to, to handle those objections you know um if 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 it's about my industry shuts down in december this is the perfect time to start an SEO campaign. You know, I understand that 100% admittedly, some industries do slow down in December and, and doing a PPC campaign, you are kind of throwing money down the toilet, theoretically. But don't take that as a, as a, a dead end and, hey, cool, we can't do anything for you from a digital marketing perspective. Because when you do that, you as an agency owner actually put your own revenue at risk, as you know. All of a sudden, you don't, you're not getting that, you're not doing any work, so you can't bill for anything. So it's December, November, December, January become really slow months for you really do everything you can to start if it is a ppc campaign and i think a lot of us in the room do do keep ppc ppc campaigns as much as you can start funding those 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 objections and those conversations into hey man cool now's the time we should start an seo campaign um also talking about um another way to to get over that is is the opposite might be happening is that your industry or your client's industry may be picking up in december and they may be saying to you, hey, man, it's just too competitive. I, I, I don't want to deal with the Black Fridays. I don't want to deal with the Cyber Mondays. I just want to take it easy for the next few months and just slow down and go on holiday. This is actually the perfect time for you to turn around and say, hey, cool. Well, let's let's sell. Let's sell like hell. Um, you know, this is, again, it's a mindset thing that, again, if you guys are the boss agencies as you, and you are because you're here, this is the perfect time for you to be saying that to your clients. Hey, dude, I'm, I'm not someone who's just pack it in and give up just because it's too competitive. We have to play to win it. Let's get in there and let's do it. Um, you know, you've really got to encourage, and this is this is about it, it's about building that relationship with your clients so that you're able to have these conversations and say, dude, just because it's competitive doesn't mean you must throw in the town and just pause it. Um, the other most common, this is probably also one of the most common that we hear is pause my SEO or PPC campaign. Um, there are fewer people online in December. Look, there's an argument for that and there's an argument against that. Yes, there are fewer people on, uh, online in December um, because people are out on holiday and chilling and doing their own thing, but they're out on holiday, chilling and doing their own thing, they're actually online. So we know that there's probably no 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 um, um, stats to back that either of those sides up. The reality is that if there's if your agent, if your client is saying this to you and saying, hey, dude, there's just nobody, nobody online, I'm not interested in running a campaign right now, let's pause the campaign. You should be having that conversation with them to say, cool, that means that your, your competitors are probably pausing their campaigns. Now, isn't there a, isn't this the best time to be selling if the competition is actually going down? There's less competition for eyeballs and you can actually um, get a bit more business because the keywords are less competitive over this time. Let's, let's nail it. Let's bang it. You know, so in a way, what we're giving you here is regardless of whether your client is saying slow, we, things slow down, let's stop, or they're saying things pick up, let's stop. You've got an objection buster for either of those scenarios. So really, really, really think about it and have these ready to go. You know, really make it hard for your clients to pause with you because of this, you know, you know what, what I would consider BS objection. It's not true. You know, these are not good objections. They are not good regions to pause campaigns. Um, the last one that I, I mean, there's tons of objections, but the last one I put on the list is, um, you know, someone say, hey, I'll probably get less ROI than if I ran the campaign in January or February or, or save my money until then. This is also not true. Um, because if people are clicking now um, and they're actually, uh, you know, online and clicking on ads, their intent to buy is is and to do business is way higher. They're much more serious about doing it. While everyone else is on holiday, you can be nailing that. You can be picking up that really serious, intentional 
purchasing and not have to deal with the, the tire kickers and the people who aren't so serious about, um, about buying. So really, you know, think about, again, this is a mindset thing and you've got to, you've got to tailor these messages to your own scenario and your own um, clients, your own niche. But think about this, guys. This is really, 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 this works. When, when, whenever a client says this to us or, or a client says this to the agency that I work with and say, hey, I give them this, I say, dude, Tell them to go into a PPC campaign. Tell them to go on an SEO campaign. Whatever you do, don't pause. You know, one of the things that people say about, um, hey, we want to pause our PPC because it's too competitive at the moment and just want to give it. Great, start an, an SEO campaign. And, and a further argument you can put towards that is when you build, when you start an SEO campaign, they've probably been putting off an SEO campaign for months. They're starting an SEO campaign in November, December, January. What you can tell them from a business perspective to, to help you sell that to them is, you're actually investing in an asset there. You're putting some real, real value into your business because PPC is great, but it's expensive. SEO, you're actually building an asset there. You're building something and, and it's three months where, okay, if you're going to pause the PPC, let's put it into SEO. Take that money, put it into SEO and build value into an asset because those, those leads, those organic leads are often the ones that convert much better because that's, that's where people are, are actually, you know, they're not being sold to, they're making that decision themselves. So- yeah, and then- and, and don't forget, you can still use the, the argument, guys, about the tax advantages. If they still give you a pushback, you can layer on some of the stuff we talked about earlier to totally. further push, push them over the edge. Yeah, 100%. 100%. So let us know there, guys. I mean, are there other um, objections that you guys may may have have come across, may have seen that we've missed? Um, are there are they good objection busters that you guys are using already? Um, just let us know in the, in the questions there, and we'll, we'll share it with everyone. Uh, and then while we're waiting for that, one thing that I want to key on something that you uh, you said, uh, Steve, about the uh, depending on which niche you're on. So the next part we're really excited about is this stuff because it's all about niches and the ones, the businesses that you can target that typically buy more, not less during the holidays. So Steve is going to walk us through this. Yeah, totally, totally, and and this is the this is it. This is the this is the real, the real burger and patty of the of the of the webinar, guys. Because this is real intelligence. This is one of the first things that I need to say right up front. Is this is not some sort of thumb suck thing um, um, about hey, um, this is what we feel and it's obvious. I mean, if you take a look there at some of the what we've got there in the niches, these are quite obvious that they pick up in November, December, January. But this is real data. And the way that we collected this data was straight out of Global operations team. We went straight over to AJ, our, our CEO of the business. And I said, mate, we want to share some real intelligence, some valuable intelligence that agency owners can take away with them from this training and go, dude, that was super helpful. I'm going to be able to go and implement this right now. He sat with his team and they came out with this information. And this is information we're going to share with you guys so that you can take this away and, and not just know, hey, which industries to target, but particulars about what campaigns to run, what um, what budgets to put into it, and, and sort of what you can expect from a, from a results perspective as well. Because when, when you have this information, you can be much more strategic about the, the conversations you have with your clients, and you can be much more strategic about the actual planning that you do and the campaigns that you start within these niches during this period. So the way the sheet is laid out, you can obviously take a quick look at it and, and understand what we're talking about there. Again, we're talking about wide niches here. There are some, some narrow niches there as well, but you can see the way we've put it across is the wide niche, let's say the top line over there, home and home improvement. We're talking about narrow niches like home decor, home and kitchen, art supplies, blinds, shades, et cetera. Definitely November, December, people are on holiday, they're chilling at home, they, they've got the time and they've got the disposable time to, to, to spend on improving their home, getting into a hobby like painting, that sort of thing. So it makes sense that these niches are ones that pick up. Over the last five, six years that we've been running campaigns on behalf of agencies that we support, this is the data that we can give you that can say, hey, if that's a niche that you that you are thinking about, this is what we would suggest you do with that niche. So Basing, basing it on 61 campaigns, um, this specific niche that we've done, the, the home decor and improvement niche, basing it on 61 campaigns, these are the kinds of ads we, ads we ran and the particular average cost per click that we got. So it shows you just, I mean, $6, six for a, a Google and Microsoft ad, that's not a bad CPC for, 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 uh, for a, a pretty competitive and, and pretty heavy industry like home decor. Um, 
Google ads move across the, the cost per lead or sale, $54.06. By the way, these are US dollars as well. I, I, um, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't think we've got that anywhere here, but this is based on US dollars. Um, and then looking at the average conversion rate, you're looking at an 8.78% conversion rate. So this, these, this is the kind of stuff, this is the kind of data that you can have a conversation with your clients with if they are giving you those objections and saying, hey, dude, I, I don't want to run this campaign right now. Go to them with this data and say, dude, I promise you, if we run a home improvement, I can probably get you a conversion rate of 9%. You know, that's that's data that that that, that works and that's on, on the ground. Um, then moving on. So um, um, the social media ads and social media, this is obviously comparing Google ads and Microsoft ads versus social media ads like Facebook, et cetera. Um, so you can just take a look and, and compare depending on what you want to, what you want. Some niches obviously will work better in Google ads and some will work better in Facebook ads, obviously depending also on what your, what your specific tactic is that you're trying to achieve and what, what the outcome you're trying to achieve is. Um, probably the most impressive and, and helpful, um, column in this sheet is definitely the, the average ad spend. Because this is going to give you, this is going to allow you to have a real concrete conversation with your client to say, listen, I know that you're worried about um, the slowing down and I know that you're worried about this time period and, and you're watching dollars and whatnot. But, I, but I'm telling you that if we spend 12,000 to 13,000, Dave, this was over three months, wasn't it? Over the three months yeah, period. Of it was. Yeah, January. just just to clarify for everyone, and we apologize, yeah, it may be a little small on your screen. So feel free to take a screenshot of this yeah. and take this to your clients and say, hey, uh, Mr. You know, home and home improvement uh, decor guy, right? This is the average ad spend that your typical um, home improvement retailer uh, spends. And if they're doing this and you're not, there's a lot to be said for social proof, right? So they see other retailers are doing this. They're going to feel left behind if they don't as well. So I really want you to hone in on the ad spend column. Look for the niches that you serve. And this is a great opportunity if, let's say, uh, you're in a seasonal, dealing with seasonal businesses that typically trail off during the holidays, huh, might be a good time to pivot and explore other niches you might be able to offer your services to. Yeah, totally. And, and this is over, this data, by the way, is over five years, collected over the last five years averages. Yes. So yeah. these are yeah. the averages. There's going to be, you know, spikes and yeah, 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 totally. across the board. I mean, that's some pretty powerful stuff. Look at those totally. ad spends. Yeah. And, and, and to your, to, to what Dave just said as well, um, clever digital, I see your question over there, which is obviously an objection. As you said, we were asked you guys to share your, some objections that you've gotten that we haven't hit on. I, I, and the objection you've shared here is I'm too busy and I'm getting ready to go away. I thought you were actually going to leave the webinar at, at one stage. I was like, dude, why are you doing this? <laughs> where you go but um that's a great one and i think going to what dave just said there's a perfect way for you number one i would say firstly is if if, if there was a client of mine as an agency owner i'd say all right i, I get it you're busy and you're ready to go away go away dude no problem i'll tell i am not expecting you to build the ad i'm not expecting let you to us do it for you yeah. it doesn't mean it still can't get done <laughs> totally and 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 if you the agency owner are also listen as i say if you're sitting in this room you're a boss agency so you're, you, I'm not saying you're not going away, but if you are going away, you're taking your laptop with you and a very, very reliable Wi-Fi signal wherever you're going. So you're a person who's going to be keeping an eye on your inbox. You're going to be keeping an eye on things. And if you are, we all deserve a break 100%. So if you are one of those agency owners who is also looking to go or you're getting ready to go and you're too busy and now your clients are saying too busy, don't accept that as an excuse. Dude, all right, I get, I get you. I understand you're busy and, you, and you're ready to go away. I'm not asking you to run the ad. I'm not asking you to sit on in Facebook um, ad builder or, or, or Google ads builder and build an ad and write content and design a, a display campaign. I'll do it for you. And if you, the agency owner, are also looking to go away and don't want to do all that stuff, hey man, we'll do it for you. Global will do it for you. That's what we do. So, you know, there's always an option. There's, there's never a reason to shut stuff down. We'll, we'll take it over for you. My team will take care of it and you can go on holiday and just keep an eye on your inbox. So, if you want to, if you if you can find a good enough reason to do it, you'll do it. If you can find a good reason, a good enough reason not to do it, you'll do that too. So it's all about mindset. It's about saying, hey, I'm not going to go. So that's a great objection, Clever Digital. I don't know your name. I'm assuming it's not Clever Digital, but unless you've changed your name, you're that committed to the digital space and you've legally changed your name to Clever Digital. Dude, that's respect. So, um, but yeah, going to going back to that, and that's why I say what Dave was saying is so true. Is is you know, have that conversation and 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 have that. Hey, if we spend this, I'm not asking you to, to spend the money. I'm not asking you to do the work. Just just put put your trust in me. I've got the data that's backed it up, and I can tell you that boom. If we spend this much in this in this 
um, niche, we can get X, Y, and Z results. So hopefully this data helps you. Sorry, the last few columns over there just speak specifically about um, services in particular that you could be selling. Google ads, Facebook ads, and Snapchats for um, the, we're on the second slide now for the home decor space. Those kind of ads work quite well. Um, obviously they work in a lot of places. These are based again on, based on five or six years over this period of time, November, December, January. These are the campaigns we ran for digital agencies who were running it for their clients. And these are the results we got. Um, again, there's the type of ads. It, I did advance, advance the screen. So this is the second screen for the niches. I'll go back one. If you guys want to take a screenshot, uh, yeah. let's see. That's the first one, uh, starting with uh, the home and home improvement in the, the row one. And this is the second one. If you want to take a screenshot of that, feel free. And then you can zoom in. Cause I know it's a little, uh, little tiny on the screen. Yeah. All right. And, and the, about the that, last Steve, column, there, just talking about the types of promotions, you know what, but again, yeah. that's completely specific, uh, completely ind individual to your, um, your niche, your client's niche, your, um, um, you know, what campaigns they want to run, what they're comfortable with selling, et cetera. Um, <laughs> no problem, Clever Digital Market. Uh, um, Rory, Rory Flynn, there you go. Ah, oh, Rory, man, we were here. Yeah, we were hoping you actually legally changed. You could have lied to us, bro. <laughs> no problem. No, I'm you kidding. could have been really clever there. Yeah. <laughs> You could have gained the respect of, of everyone in the in the room and said, dude, this guy changed his name to Clever Digital. Um, uh, Rory, nice. And, and it's a great question, bro. And, and tell us, if they, let us know if that helps you, if that, you know, if that's something that will help you get over that objection. I'm too busy and getting ready to go away. Dude, you know, as I say, if there's, if there's, a, if there's a desire to get it done, you'll flip and get it done. You know what I mean? Yeah, and then that's what uh, what this data is designed to uh, to offer you guys. Hopefully, help uh, help you so you can go back to your clients and say, "Hey, look at some of these averages across these these uh, niches. You're in that niche. This is what we got to do." So it arms you uh, for those arguments. Yeah, totally. So, that being said, let's get tactical. Let's go over the tactical game plan. That's what you can present them and. Um, hopefully increase their their ad spend or their digital marketing services with you what about you yourself or even you can take these same things and go to your clients and offer this to them i'm going to give you a five-step game plan and any you know dean jackson he's one of the ogs in the marketing space he has this wonderful thing and some of you may have seen this before but i'm going to show you when how to um to stack these tactics and Dean has this amazing nine word email that revives dead leads. So he used to run a podcast with Joe Polish, uh, another one of the, uh, the gurus in the marketing space called I Love Marketing. Uh, the source is down there if you want to go actually listen to the podcast where he describes this whole thing. Uh, I did you the favor of exerting a, um, a article which describes it as well the source is also on the bottom but so th this is literally um screenshotted from the article that that dean wrote on this okay easy lucrative and fun it, it is only nine words it's super simple two steps so look at all the leads you have and this works particularly well if they're 90 days um, or older. If you have earlier leads that haven't converted yet, like you know 30 or 60 days, it'll still work, but it, it works especially well with older leads that you can revive. And leads, don't forget, these are phone conversations you've had. There might be um, B&I network meetings that you had or bis old business cards that you have. Okay, it, it's um, not just necessarily in your active campaign or Infusionsoft keep database, right? These can, these leads can be anywhere. So roll up your sleeves and think about where you can get these leads and tell your clients to do the same. And then here's the magic of step two. Once you got those leads, you send out an email to all of them saying something like, are you still looking for a house in Georgetown? If you're a real estate agent, for example, or are you still planning a trip to Israel? If you're a travel agent, or are you still insert super simple uh, desired end result here. Are you still looking for more SEO leads? Are you still looking for more sales in your business? Dot, dot, dot. And that's it. Now there's going to be a temptation to bolster the email. Don't. There is some magic about keeping it so simple. And here's the results. When Dean did this and taught this, a yacht broker said, are you still looking for a yacht? And sold a hundred million dollar yacht. Motorcycle jeans designer sold over 9,000 in one week with a nine word 
email. So do not underestimate the power of this. Steve, you guys do this yourself, right? At Globital, right? Totally, totally. This is a huge, um, uh, hugely important and valuable tactic, guys. It's called, it's actually, it falls into a, um, to a category of email called a spear email, which means uh, it stands for a short, personal, expecting a response. Uh, Dave, you've got a line there over there. You, you mentioned that uh, part of the, so you want to give it a read there. Part of the way this works so well is it like you're only talking to the reader, like yeah. you've only sent them one email. Um, now you're waiting for a, a reply. Nobody wants to be rude. They can be, uh, they can't help but respond, especially if they're still exactly. looking for you. So th the point of this email, the spear email is a short personal expecting a response is it's, it's kind of the way um, that we always explain to people is we say, um, that these, uh, the nine word email, the way we explain it to people is we say, it's a kind of email that if you were going to your, your cousin for dinner, or you were inviting them over for dinner, or your, or your brother or your sister, you were inviting them to come and watch a kid's concert or something like that. And you were going to send them an email. You wouldn't put a subject line like concert happening Friday, 10 PM, keen question mark name. You know, it's not the kind, that's the kind of marketing email that we, we kind of send out. This kind of email is quite different. And it's a genius thing. Dean Jackson really is it's a very, very simple and yet genius email marketing tactic. Instead, your subject line would read something like concert question mark or concert exclamation mark, Joe's concert, Betty's concert, whatever it is. And then the email would be, you may not even put their name at the top. You may even just say, Betty's concert's happening Friday, 3 p.m. Are you in? Like you would send a nine word email that would be short, it would be personal, it would be expected. You'd completely expect your brother or your sister or your, your mother to, to respond to it and say, yeah, I'll be there for my grandkids concert. So that's the kind of email that you're sending out from a business perspective. And, you know, again, today's point I've already said is nobody wants to be rude. And, and when people get it for the first time and they see a nine word email come into their inbox, they kind of shocked. They're like, dude, is this spam? This must be spam. This can't be. They're not be sent that it's an unbelievably powerful tactic. So yeah, really, it sounds really, so personal because it's so short and sweet, right? Totally. You know, we're so into the, as, as digital agencies and marketers and particularly copywriters, we're so into the habit of writing this fantastic content with unbelievable benefits and, and a, a great call to action. And that's good. There's a time and place for that. But this tactic is one of those that flies against the grain and goes to just jars people out of out of the space that they're so used to seeing email 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 and all of a sudden it's like it's just a one worder training or it's just a one worder of leads you're like leads yeah what yeah, open the email exactly. it's like are you still are you still looking for more leads yeah who's going to say no to that <laughs> exactly it's so bad yeah i mean what the hell is this and and i think what's also key about this guys you, you need to obviously look up uh, you know we're not here to punt dean jackson's business so go and look it up and and, and, and as much as i'm sure he, he, he uh, as much as i'm sure he'd love us to um go look up the tactic itself and um see how it works the, the email itself has to be laid on a very specific style no images no no banners at the bottom no email signals none of that just yeah, like it's coming email. from your mom she doesn't have a sign, oh, right, right? <laughs> <laughs> totally uh, we, we have a couple other uh, questions come in hey, uh, we got Jeff Zalea in the house we got height from Yo, height Jeff, Jeff, how's it, bro? Uh, Jeff asked will the recording uh, be sent out absolutely we guys are going to hook you guys up and then Basil says I'm in the medical niche typically her niche uh, or his niche sorry uh, shuts down big time now is a great time to build brand uh, great great uh, choice there as well by the way all of this and everything we shared so far when we're pushing uh, you and your clients to increase your ad spend to get more exposure, get more marketing dollars in play. It also builds your brand too. So uh, great insight there, Basil. So now's a great time to build brand and start filling pipelines for the next year. Correct. Or pitching new clients. Would you guys focus on that or perhaps taking an advantage of holiday makers? It does both, my friend. Uh, so absolutely take advantage of the holiday makers. That's the whole thing. Remember our shopping trends, remember our buying behaviors, remember our anticipatory advertising, right? So if they are uh, shutting down in the medical niche, um, and, and again, depending on, I don't know whether you're selling to hospitals, there's a lot of questions depending on what you're selling here. Um, but if your industry and niche lends itself to shopping at the holidays, then absolutely put on some sales, take advantage of that. But you can also build brand. And because it's the slowdown, you can also reposition and say, 
because everyone else is shutting down now, this is the exact time to ingest and inject some uh, funds into your business to hit the, the new year uh, you know, with a great start. Yeah. Steve, and, 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 yeah and, and on that, I would say, um, Basil, it's, it's, a, it's a great- uh, Physical uh, therapist great... specifically. Yep. Got it now. What's that? Uh, Basil replied, it's physical therapist. It's, it's, it's so, 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 so. <laughs> You, now, now you've really, really given me an idea there, Basil, when you said that, because, you know, what, what, if that's the case and you fully get it is what better holiday maker um, group of people would, would be good to target or, or um, business would be good to target their medical people whose clientele are all on holiday, probably injuring themselves, you know, surfing <laughs> accidents, playing soccer, picking Skiing up, a and up in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> you know these you know, the trees. totally totally you know they're all the way they're skiing they do all these things they they are all potentially getting some pretty bad physio required injuries over this period dude perfect time to be building a bit of brand presence in that space so <laughs> in a way you kind of want to be filling up the funnel you're 100 right that basil is it's about filling up that funnel for the january february march but um, you know, especially that from that perspective is be top of mind, especially if you're, if you're physio, this is a conversation to your clients, if your physio competitors are all pausing their campaigns and going on holiday, dude, I'd be doubling down on getting brand presence during that time because people are about to come Absolutely. back on holiday and go, oh, you know, it wasn't a good idea to play cricket last week, you know, on, on the beach in, in Umschlanga or whatever it was. This is the, per oh, you can't even go to the beach in Umschlanga these days, I don't think, but um. This is the perfect time to be, you know, be top of mind, be email marketing out to those people. Say, so even if it's something about, even if it is an email about, hey, did you guys know that that injuries during the December period increased by 72%? When you get back from holiday, exactly. remember me, I'm the one who, who should be fixing your shoulders, fixing your knee. And, and don't you forget about remarketing. You can remarket your existing uh, leads and clients while they're on holidays to oh, keep yeah. your ad budgets down but uh, targeting those who are already uh, warmed up to you. Um, um, now, I, I, we do, I just want to be conscious of time. So let's move on to yes, number sorry, two. So on. send out nine word emails. <laughs> That's the whole point of all of that. Then cross sell like crazy. Steve, yeah. take her away yeah. on this one. Go for it. And yeah, guys, look, we recognize we come to the top of the hour here. So we're, we're, we're not going to rush through it. We'll still give you the value, but um, we want to give you everything. So um, this is cross selling is crazy. Cross selling like crazy is, is an absolutely simple tactic that you guys should implement. And it's one that I, so many agencies um, that I speak to all day long, when I speak to them and they're not doing this stuff, blows my mind. So here's how you can, these are just very, very obvious, low hanging fruit services that you should be selling if you're not selling to agencies across uh, across the way. If you offer, and this is a little table, take a screenshot of it and go away with it. If you offer web design, you should be selling them copywriting because I guarantee you, if you're a web design agency, you've got a ton of web, unfinished web design projects that are ready to go. They look beautiful. They're well branded. Everything's good, but you just don't have the copy for it. Why? Because you haven't really gone around to it and the client says, keep saying, we'll give you the copy. They're never coming with the copy. Get Sell that copy to them. Sell that copy to them immediately. The other one you can do if you're doing web design is SEO. No, this is one of the biggest ones that I hear from digital agencies who do do web design is they, they come to us and they say, hey, dude, do, can you guys do SEO for us? I'm, I'm tired of telling my web design clients that I don't do SEO. I bought these amazing websites for us and then they come to me three months later and they're like, hey, dude, why is my website not on the first page of Google? I'm like, dude, because we just bought the website and we didn't do any SEO. I, I, you know, I try to tell you that you need to get SEO it's three months and you, and you built us a terrible website. No, I didn't. I bought you a good website, but you didn't want to take on any SEO at the top. Let me offer you SEO, cross-sell the hell out of that. Um, easy ones if you're doing SEO already for people. Obviously, copywriting, uh, Google, the Google algorithm run, uh, loves fresh um, content every month. So you should be doing a fresh blog every month. So there's a great easy one, especially during the shutdown of Christmas. Dude, just get some blogs written and get a ton of, get all your blogs, all your clients' blogs for the whole year you can potentially get written at this time of year. Obviously, they need to be evergreen and, be, and make sense in, in July, August. But this is a time you can start doing this. Pick up that, that cash flow in your agency by offering services like that. Um, PPC and funnels, they kind of go hand in hand as well. Really, really good, good services to cross-sell to an SEO client. Because your SEO clients, tell, again, put up your hand, tell me I'm wrong. Your SEO clients are sitting there every day in your inbox going, Dude, why, why is it taking so long to get to the first page of Google? Because SEO takes a long time. So if that's their complaint, if that's what they're saying, hey, man, PPC and a funnel. Uh, yes, it's going to be more expensive, but you are going to be able to show them immediate leads. That's what they're looking for. 
Exactly. And I'm going to show you, um, actually, I think it's on the coming up on the next, next slide. It is on the next slide. I'm going to show you exactly how you can do that with a, a funnel. So thanks. So that's a perfect segue, Steve. And we are coming up to the top of the hour. So I apologize. We are going to go a little over just FYI, guys. So maybe 15, 20 minutes or so. Hopefully that's OK. Stick around because we got some of the best stuff coming up. Uh, and don't forget, when you cross sell like crazy, it does protect your revenue and grows it, too. Right. That's fantastic. The third thing is you want to fix your own funnel and you can tell your clients to fix theirs to get more revenue out of them. What do I mean by that? Okay, now <laughs> GoDaddy, they are currently running a 99, I'm up in Canada, so that's Canadian dollars, which <laughs> is maybe more like 74 cents US <laughs> with the dollar exchange, 99 cents for the first year for domain names. They're doing this too. All the big players are putting their stuff on sale. And part of your funnel, if you don't have this already, you need an entry point offer, a super low ticket, low risk item like this. Um, depending on where you are in the world, up in North America, we have Wendy's every single summer. We got Wendy's 99 cent Frosties on every single time. It draws people into the, uh, Wendy's is by the way, uh, like a McDonald's, it's a, um, uh, fast food hamburger chain up here and um they they run that promotion without fail every single summer just to get bodies through the door because they're not they know they're not going to stop there they're going to get the hamburgers they're going to get the fries they're going to do all that stuff right so low ticket offers think of what you can do and bundle in for holiday sales black friday sales christmas sales and make it super low ticket just to convert the sole purpose of this guy's is to convert a lead into a customer. That is going to be your biggest cost of acquisition. Uh, typically, is um, the biggest cost of business is acquiring new customers. This is how you do it, and you want to do it with a super low ticket item because once a buyer, always a buyer. Okay. Now, what are they doing here? They're not just offering something super low ticket. Here's how you can fix your your funnel: get something super low ticket like domain names, but if you're buying a domain name, what does that person next need? They're building a website. Huh, what is GoDaddy's core offer? It's hosting. That's the thing they really want to sell because it's a recurring revenue on an ongoing basis. They didn't start with the 99 cent domain name though. They started with their core offer, reverse engineered it to see what the first step, what that first phase was that a person who eventually will need hosting will we'll buy. What can we dangle in front of them in terms of a carrot, super low ticket? Oh yeah, super cheap domain name, like 99 cents for a year. Ridiculous offer, irresistible offer, right? But they reverse engineered it. That's how you can fix your own funnel. That's how you can tell your clients to fix theirs. Let me show you by way of an example. You always want to start with your core offer, reverse engineer from there. In this case, you might have a suite of services like SEO, PPC, all the things, right? Uh, I did this with a client of mine. He happened to be a financial advisor and we created, we digitized his brain and put it into an online course. So that was his core offer in this case. And then we plucked out, this is called splintering. You want to splinter or carve out a smaller piece of your core offer, just like hosting is your core offer. Huh, what do they need before that? Websites. What do you need as part of the website? Domain name. That's splintering and reverse engineering that whole thing. So we just plucked out his best module, made that the entry point offer for super cheap, and then plucked out of that in the, that uh, this uh, a tool that appeared in the module and made that the lead magnet. That's the most valuable thing in the, that offer. So you can see how you can reverse engineer it. So once we have those three elements, we started the core offer work backwards. How your audience sees it though is forward. They see the lead magnet and then pivoted into the entry point offer and then into the core offer. The results of that structuring look like this. This is an exact screenshot from uh, my client's ClickFunnels account. This was the beta test. I can't remember the exact time frame. This was over a week or two, but check this out. You can see the lead magnet. Uh, it was a financial calculator on the, uh, the left. Look at the uh, conversion rates, opt-ins, 55%. I crushed with lead magnets and how to structure with them. However, the entry point offer, EPO, Wealth Map was the name of the, uh, the module from that course, 35 takers on it. Well, 34, if you look at the actual sales in blue over here, right? 
that is going, instead of most people want to sell direct to their core offer, what if you structured it like this and look at the gross sales, just the entry point offer, which was a, and remember he's selling high ticket, right? He's a financial advisor. The course was a few hundred bucks. This particular module, I think it was 47. It accounted, it was $47. It happened to account for 47% of the gross revenue for the entire funnel during this beta period, okay, over a couple of weeks. That's how important and effective an entry point offer can be. So if you don't have one yourself, now is the perfect time to inject one and put it out there for the holiday sales. And then they become buyers, converting your leads into buyers. That's the whole point of doing this, guys. Cool? So I encourage all of you to fix your funnel. And then you can stack all those tactics. We talked about the nine word email, send it. We talked about offering your new entry point offer from your fixed funnel. Once they reply to your, what if you use all these tactics in conjunction, guys? You send out your nine word email. Hey, you still looking for more leads? And then they reply, what if you offer them a new entry point offer from your newly fixed funnel? And then you cross sell them from there, your other services. Okay, that's how you can start to use these in conjunction. Any one of these tactics by themselves can get you clients by Christmas, I promise you. You start to interplay them, interweave them, interconnect them by stacking the tactics, and it's an expen exponential multiplier effect. Okay. Now, the last tactic is this can pour absolute gas on your fire, guys, is partnering with premium players. I've partnered with Digital Marketer. I'm one of their certified partners. They send me so many leads, give me so much exposure, uh, put me on the biggest stages, on, uh, marketing stages on the planet. It's been an incredible partnership. I know I, I've partnered with Global here. I'm their fractional CMO. We're doing this, uh, this training together. It's great exposure. Uh, I'm one of the, uh, the mastermind mentors in the M3 mastermind. Just this week, yesterday, as a matter of fact, we uh, wrapped up a two-day virtual session for that mastermind, okay? Uh, Scott Cunningham, good friend of mine, he runs Socialite up uh, in Edmonton, three hours north of me in Alberta. He partners, he, he uh, focuses specifically on e-com and Shopify stores. He's a marketing agency, runs a marketing agency that helps them. He's partnered with Shopify and makes millions through that partnership. He's partnered, if you're in the Shopify or e-com space, you may be familiar, familiar with Clavio, which is the email marketing uh, uh, SaaS software that powers e-com, and Privy, another plugin with Shopify. He's got partnerships with all of those, and they fund and fly him all over the world to speak and do trainings for them. So he gets free exposure by them. He gets clients. He gets leads just because he's offering incredible value through that partnership. And I know, Steve, you have a lot of experience for partnerships. You want to speak a little bit on that as well? Yeah, totally. I mean, I think, you know, the most, um, as I say, Dave, Dave said some great examples over there about partnerships. And those are pretty good strategic partnerships. But, you know, one of the things that um, I've found in my experience um, that digital agencies tend to, the, some of the most obvious partnerships that they tend to miss out on are sitting right in front of them. And I'm talking particularly about their competitors. So I'm not for one second saying that the digital industry is not a competitive place. 100% is competitive and it's tough and it's lonely. But we tend as digital agency owners to make it a little bit more, more lonely and more, more difficult for ourselves because we're so precious about our own little patch of grass that we refuse to even open up and talk to anybody else who may be a potential competitor to us. And what that lands up, what me, that means often is that lands up putting us in a position where we try to do everything ourselves and we're lonely. We continue to be lonely. So I encourage people to look for partnerships in obvious places, like sometimes it is with your competitors or who you think your competitors are. They're not actually your competitors. They may be really, really, really strong at SEO and you may be really, really, really strong at web design. And you've always thought of them as a competitor. They work around the block from you and you're just like, no, I don't want to talk to them because they might steal my clients. Little do you know that they're looking for a great web designer to work with and you are looking for a great SEO agency to work with. Dude, throw each other work back and forth. All of a sudden, you've got you've doubled your business just because you've been introduced to all these new clients. So, Absolutely. And you can, looking, you can actually make them referral partners too. You can refer not just business, but you can have a, a toss in uh, uh, referral commissions for doing so as well. Completely. I do that all the time. 
completely. So look in obvious places a lot of the time. The other obvious place to look in it is if you are in the um, if you are in the legal perspective, uh, um, Basil, you said I think you were in the physio perspective, uh, in the physio niche, etc. If you're in that niche, go look for other. This is a great way to look to find out if somebody is is going to be a good partner for you or a bad partner. Is go look for a business that is serving the same audience as you, but is not competing with you. So if you're doing digital marketing for yeah, exactly. If you're doing digital marketing for a physio niche, go find a lawyer who specializes in the physio niche. Say, hey, dude, I hear you specialize in physios doing legal work. I specialize in physios doing digital marketing. Do any of your clients need help digital marketing? I promise you, he knows of a few. Do any of your clients need help with their legal side? Yeah, definitely. Cool. Let's let's have a coffee. Let's meet up once a week. Who, who do you speak to this week? They might need, yeah, let me introduce you. All of a sudden, you double your business just like that. So it's as simple as that sometimes, just to find that obvious partner that you need to. And, and, and just building on that, even massage therapists might be a good partner for you in particular, uh, Basil, because huh, you get a massage therapist, they're, they're doing their work, and what do they typically find? Oh, you got aches and pains on whoever they're working for. Oh, I know a great physiotherapist I can refer you to to alleviate your pain if the massage Probably. isn't good enough. So there's lots of ways you can do that. I do want to hone in on a key word here, for example, not it is just partners, but premium partners, how do they know, how do you know if they're good? And I know, Steve, you partner with all kinds of digital agencies across the planet, and I know you're a premium player. How, number one, I'm working with you. Number two, you guys are actually ISO certified. Can you speak to that for a bit and what that yeah, actually means? Totally, yeah. Dave, you mentioned you wanted me to just go over that quickly. And guys, this is quite important. Um, just a small one is ISO certification is basically a, it's a worldwide, I'm sure you've seen it on some websites, one of it's a global certification that you get that, that businesses apply for um, to, to have the certification that basically it's a stamp of approval on that business to say this business. We have looked into this business where we're, uh, it's basically the kind of standards and poor, the, the um, you know, a, a certification business that says we've looked into this business and we have gone through them from top to toe and we recognize them as a great business that follows procedure and delivers on their promises, basically. So that's really what it's about. It's about we get crawled through once a year, they come to our offices, they pick us apart, they look through our process and they say, yeah, these guys are following every process. They've got quality assurance all over the place. They take care of what they say they're going to do, they do. So it's a stamp of approval for, for um, agencies. And it, it's just a, a just a big little um, a way that you can, that we, we allows us to, to put confidence into the agencies that we support, basically. Absolutely. And for some reason, I kicked out my screen share, so I'm just trying to find it again. Oh, all good. Yeah. Um, Basil, just by the way, saying, uh, I think that's a million, a million percent. We have a meeting tomorrow with a medical billing company. They know which practices are struggling. Basil, dude, that's awesome, man. Um, you know, th that's exactly the, the point. And that's a, they're a medical billing company. Uh, and I've got a mate, actually, Basil, if you're interested, I could potentially introduce you to who's, um, he built software for, for the medical space. Another good one. You know, no doubt they've got a bunch of people who they built software for that are disgruntled with their digital market, digital marketers. So that's always a good way to go as well. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And, and back just to, to round out the uh, conversation on ISO certification, it's actually a global standard that is usually reserved like for manu big manufacturing companies, just so their clients know that they're certified in playing uh, um, the, the game with the right kind of quality the right kind of systems, the right kind of procedures and SOPs. Steve and Global do that for a, their digital marketing white label reseller program. They are amazing yeah. at that. So I just wanted to you know, draw attention to that because what any other digital agents, agencies out there are ISO certified? You ever hear that before? I haven't. These are the only guys that I know. Uh, so anyway, just want to draw attention to that. And uh, that being said, that was your tactical game plan. You can literally run with that today. You could have been typing up your nine word email on this training as we speak yeah. and sent it out right so i wanted to get super tactical uh now this takes a little more time you got to get your new entry point offers you fix your own funnel right tell your clients to do the same and then you can actually offer your services on how to fix their funnel entry low ticket self-liquidating offers or slos is another way of um phrasing that tripwire pricing uh if you're familiar with tripwires the, those are all synonyms for the same thing just a low ticket item to convert leads into the customers even at a loss that's the key guys you're converting leads into customers because once a buyer always a buyer and they're 10 times more likely to buy again once they become a customer even at a low price point. 
And then of course you want to cross sell your other services and don't confuse cross selling with upselling. Upselling is, hey, if you go to McDonald's and get small fries and they ask you, um, do you want uh, a large fries instead? That's upselling. Cross selling is going to McDonald's and saying, hey, can I have some fries? Do you want a hamburger with that? That's cross selling. It's complementary services or products or goods to what you're already offering, like Steve explained before. You're offering website design. It absolutely makes sense that you're offering copywriting services before as well because you know they're going to need it. Okay. Yeah. Cross sell your other services, stack those tactics, use all of those in conjunction. You can use them singularly for a quick hit. You can send out a nine word email today. You can cross sell your services today by literally dialing for dollars. You can call up your existing clients, guys, and literally have more clients, more revenue by Christmas. You'll even do better if you stack those tactics and then pour fuel on the fire by partnering with premium players. So that is your tactical game plan. Now, we promised you a $1,000 bonus. I'm going to turn it back over to Steve here on how this works and how you can actually partner with Lobital to help implement done for you without you guys lifting a finger and still get more revenue in your bank while cutting your costs at the same time, turning some of your fixed costs into variable ones. Steve, you want to walk us how that yeah, works? Yeah, awesome. And, and as we said, guys, you know, this is the end of it. We, we, we're, not, we're not here to sell you on anything. In fact, we're here to give you free stuff. So the bottom line is um, if you're interested in, um, if, you're, if you're at a space in your agency where you do need help, or even, you know, you, you just want to figure it out and just see, are we the right kind of people that you can partner with? We're more than happy to remove that obstacle that we know a lot of agencies have of. It's not easy to trust somebody will hopefully take that out of your hands so um what we're happy to do obviously this is for uh, um for any new agency that we're not currently already working with um obviously but those agencies know they don't need the thousand dollars from us if they ever want to try out a new service with us we will give them a complimentary trial in it anyway this is really for new agencies and i think most of the people i've seen in the room i don't think we work with yet so um so there's a few of you so i haven't had a chance to look through it properly but um if you are interested in in, in finding out how we can help you from a resource perspective of, um, and just write some blogs for you, build a funnel, do some SEO for you just for free so that you don't have to, you don't have to take that risk of spending any money with us without knowing who we are, how we work, what, are we the right fit for you? Hit that link down there um, or you can get in touch with me directly either or I'll hook you up with a connection either if you're in um, Australia, New Zealand, um, UK, South Africa, or obviously in the States, we can hook up myself, with me personally or with Leanne in, um, who's, who's out in Australia as well. Let's have a conversation. We do a quick little conversation with you just to understand your agency. Um, we then provide you with a little proposal just to show you who we are and how we operate. And um, from there, you know, we get you, we load your job. We get you, get you started. As I say, whatever job that you're looking for, as long as it's for one of your clients or for a lead generation campaign for one of your own, so we can get you more leads. We're happy to do it. Um, again, just to remove that, um, you, we know, we recognize that the outsource white label space is a really, really competitive one and it really can be quite dirty as well. You get a lot of chance takers, a lot of people who are based in weird places that are online today and the next day, they're just not. So not at all how we operate. So, and we know that there's a, there's a fear around trying people out and spending money with them. So come, come spend, don't come not spend money with us and try us out. Um, no upfront credit cards, no locking cards, none of that stuff. We just want to help you. So if it's of interest to you and you can find benefit in it, please hit up that that um, that link, um, book in a time, and let's discuss um, how we can support you and build that. You know, hopefully become a again. This is a partnership. Actually, it becomes a partnership where we are very much invested in your agency su success for the exact reason. The why, way we always put it is why are we invested in your in your success because the better you do the more business you bring us. I can't sell an SEO campaign. I can't sell a website to a physio. I don't do any retail work. I only do wholesale. I don't compete with you guys. So I can't go out and sell a web design, a web project or an SEO campaign or a PPC campaign or a blog. I rely on you to go do that. So I'm very invested in you guys doing a better job so that I'm able to, to basically run a better business. So and that, that's what I love about working with these guys with Steve and Globital, the entire Globital team is they're all about helping as am I. Uh, hopefully that was helpful to all of you guys. Again, we're not here to sell anything. We just want to help. We believe rising tides lift all ships. And when we help you, you help your clients and you're actually helping them put um, uh, 
roofs over the head, help pay their mortgages, put food on the table, and it's win, 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 a trickle down all the way down. Take a screenshot of this page, guys, because I know that the, um, the URL there is a little bit lengthy. Don't miss the LP there. So it's globaltomarketing.com forward slash LP. That's not an I, a capital I. It's an LP for landing page slash meeting dash calendars. And it'll come to this page where you can book a call uh, depending on what area of the world you're in. That's how extensive and comprehensive Global's um, span and reach is that they have uh, these all over the world. I'm just looking at some of the uh, the chats here. Um, Basil said, awesome advice. Um, on a million percent, we have a meeting tomorrow with medical billing company, just to close on a loop on that. That's fantastic that you're uh, continues to say you're more confident now that you're moving in the right direction. Absolutely. We're here to, to help you uh, Basil, Sam, you said, could you put that previous slide up again? I think you were referring to the summary slide of this one for the tactical game plan. Am I right, Sam? Uh, hopefully that's the one you can screenshot there if you like. Uh, um, and, and guys, just while Dave's going through that, if, if you do have any questions, put your hand up. We can always, you know, allow you to speak, um, you know, give you the access to speak. And you can totally, yeah, we can make this live oh, yeah. interactive. Yeah. And, and then that's the end of the main... Yeah. yeah, that's the end of the main uh, presentation slides anyway, guys. So we're here to happy to uh, stick around as long as you have questions and, and chat with you. You can come on live, ask us directly, or just uh, continue uh, doing it in the Q&A chat. Um, Sam says, yes, thanks. So it was this slide you were talking to. Glad I got that. Uh, clever who was... Chad, I see your comment there. I'll, I'll look into that. Just get in touch with me or, or get in touch with the team and, and we'll figure out. I'm not sure if you if you went to it, if you've already met with the team or what the story there was. Um, but yeah, please do let us know, guys, if you've got any questions. And, and, and you know, if you want to reach out to Dave and I personally, we have to have a conversation. Basil, uh, sorry, Basil, there you go. Um, I've just not given you access to talk, Basil. Oh, super. Thanks, guys. Um, awesome presentation um just tons of value just really great um for you, uh, for you guys to do this i actually just came off a training call with a with a company called invisible ppc i'm sure you've probably heard of them yeah uh, i know invisible ppc had... well actually and i i'm actually good friends with uh, the new owner they just recently sold to uh justin rondo i was just hanging out with him last week in austin actually or the week before <laughs> oh, that's awesome um also a great company and i'm just uh uh, I actually didn't know what to expect from the score, but I'm just really happy that I jumped on to actually just see what your offering is as well. So I'll definitely be in touch. Um, something that we're looking to do now is um, actually move on to physical therapists in the USA, uh, particularly on the East Coast. The time difference is just a little bit easier for us to absorb. Um, just wanted to find out this global, um, would they be able to offer services across both South Africa and the USA? Um, and, uh, and just with regards to your white labeling, um, Oftentimes where I see this thing trip up uh, a little bit is in the in the communication between what is our responsibility and what is the responsibility of our partners. Um, and I just want to hear just a little bit more about that, um, if you if you wouldn't mind sharing. Got you. So so particularly um, the answer to the first question is yes, 100 percent. You know, if you're if you're supporting a, a client in the East Coast of America or South Africa, we can support you with, with in both of those places. No problem. Um, I guess what you're talking about, when you're asking about the partnership, particularly. Um, sorry, just re ask that second question again. You're talking about a partnership with Global. Is that what you mean? Um, yeah. So, I mean, just to make use of your of your core offering, which is. Um sort of fulfillment services for us so it gives us the gives us the ability to be able to scale our our agencies um, while you guys are obviously providing the the fulfillment on, on on the back end oftentimes where i do see it go go wrong is um particularly with regard to the the figuring out what is the responsibility of the of the of the front end agency essentially in, in other words our responsibility in terms of um brand strategy in terms of um figuring out particularly what marketing niche you want to focus on uh be it facebook ads ppc um funnel building copywriting and then your responsibility as um as the agency that does the performance oftentimes wires get crossed over there and you know cut, there's this there's, there's a sort of lack of handover between the two yeah. i just want to know what your approach to that was yeah, got you. So I'm actually so stoked you asked that question. I'll tell you why is because it allows me to sort of hit on one of our key differentiators against some of our competitors. This is another reason and also discuss why we give away and we give agencies who sign up with us for the first time. We were just getting going a thousand dollars. 
Number one, confidentiality is key to us. So a lot of agencies obviously want a referral. That, so they want to know, hey, can you tell me another agency? Put me in touch with another agency. I want to talk to them about working, what it's like working with you. We don't do that. We keep it very confidential who we support um, because some agencies don't want their end clients knowing that we're um, that we're um, you, supporting them. Every, they want their clients to think that they're doing everything themselves. So we give them the $1,000 so they can actually become their own refer, their own testimonial, their own experience. And say, hey, yeah, I didn't have to spend any money and I can see these guys are good for me. Um, the, the In terms of the why I bring that up and why that's important that that conversation about um, uh, confidentiality is um, is about responsibility and, communi and, and when you say breakdown with the client or breakdown in communication and responsibility about who does what. Um, we never, ever, ever engage with your end clients. So that's quite a key thing because um, some white label providers out there will, will do that. And the next thing you know, they're starting to go behind your back and talk to their client and start poaching those clients from you. We don't do that. So it, uh, it means that the responsibility with that relationship between you and your end client is your responsibility. You engage with your client, ownership of, of websites, of hosting and all that stuff belongs between you and your client. Global doesn't take any of that. We have a relationship with you, the agency. And what does that agent what does that relationship look like? It's we you need to treat our team, Global's team, as an extension of your own team. So you need to treat us as if you would a, a web designer who's sitting in the office next to you, poke your head and say, Hey guys, how's it going? How's that website looking? We're nearly there. That's how we work. So that's how the responsibility works. The responsibility on you, the agency, is to set the strategy for your PPC campaign, your SEO campaign, your website. And give that strategy on, a, on an engaged basis, daily, weekly, monthly, whatever that engagement looks like with our team, treating them as an extension of your own. On a, on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis, you continue to engage with our, with our team to say, hey, guys, how's that strategy coming? How's that SEO coming? That responsibility is yours to set that strategy. Our team will fulfill that strategy. They will do the time-consuming button pushing, building links, building ads, et cetera. You just need to set that strategy. Does that answer your question? No, hundred percent. Because obviously, as a, as an agency ourselves, we we put a lot of time and effort into figuring out how our niche works and how our niche yes. kind of uh, functions. And we have sort of IP that we would feel um, totally. very hard done by that IP ended up in the hands of other people. And of course, there's nothing new under the sun. But I mean, we like to think that we've worked pretty hard on figuring out our strategies, and we'd like to yeah. work with the trust with a trusted partner to be able to fulfill yeah. that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, love what you guys are saying. We'll definitely be in touch. Cool, cool. Just on that, just by the way, when you do sign up with us, and as I say, book in a meeting on that link or, you know, get in touch with me. You'll receive some emails after this as well, just to just to get to where you can get the links from there as well. But um, just on that, when you do sign up, when you do go through the process, you'll be you'll sign up on our portal. When you sign up to the portal, there's an agreement that, that you click on and that you agree to. That's an agreement. That's basically our SLA between you and us. And in that agreement, it makes very clear exactly what I've just said about we don't do any retail, we don't go after your clients, ownership of things, but you know, we have we have just like you have RP that you want to protect, we've got RP that we want to protect. So we don't, you know, we 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 make that very, very clear that the relationship is about just supporting the hell out of you. We don't get involved with your clients at any stage. We keep it, that's your relationship to manage. Fantastic. Thanks so much, guys. No stress. Anybody else got any questions, any other queries about the thousand dollars, about anything we've presented here? Um, anything yeah, we can a, make here? There's a couple in the, the Q&A, Steve. Oh, I got you. Sorry, yeah. Uh, Chad says he's uh, been working with Global for nine months now. would love to, to, to hear your experience with that, Chad, and uh, see. Um, hold on one second. See the freeze. Um, uh, sorry, Miss Thunder. Terms only for new agents, also like me, already using global services. No, unfortunately, Eugene. Um, only for new agencies. But Eugene, if you do have services that you that that we offer that you would like to try out, like you, you maybe you're using us for SEO, but you've always wondered what's the PPC um, service like? Are they any good? Dude, 100% speak to the customer service team. Tell them Steve sent you. Say, hey, Steve said that you guys can give me a free trial on PPC and they'll be happy to oblige. I'll give you a month free. You know, let them set up some campaigns for you just so that you can understand. Um, you know, we don't expect you to just trust us that our PPC is as good as our SEO or vice versa or our copywriting is great. You want to check out the copywriting team, ask the team for some free blogs. They'll happily write them for you so that you can see, hey, yeah, you guys are nailing it up. Your, your blogs are as good as your SEO. They can take that off your hands. Um, um, sorry, Richard, you're saying also it's struggling with uh, getting times in line between global and the LinkedIn campaign, specifically the client is requesting 
a request for two FA codes. Yeah, we we recognize, and this is Richard. You've actually hit on one of the real challenges that we do have working in the third world versus the third first world, and um, outsourcing stuff. That two factor authentication code thing is a tough one to get over. Um, but our CS guys are 24, 24 hours a day. So I'm interested to know why you're having issues with that. Just um, Richard, I'll, uh, get in touch with me, send me a mail personally, and, and I'll definitely um, figure that out for you with the, um, um, I, we can definitely figure that out and get you sorted. Um, great, Eugene, yeah, please do that. Um, Clever Digital, any, uh, <laughs> it was Rory, I think, yeah. Uh, any advice on uh, how we can... <laughs> Any of us that we can prime prepare clients and gather the right information to make the most of your services. Um, that's an interesting question. Um, we, you know, again, your relationship with your clients is your relationship. So our services shouldn't really matter. Um, it's about what you do to, to um, it's about your services. They're not our services. They're your services. We're just fulfilling them for you, if you know what I mean. Um, what what I would say here is is number one is we do have some sales we, have, we do have some information um, in our portal of slide decks that explain exactly what each of our services includes. And at the yeah, bottom- Yeah, you have sales collateral up there, right? See? Exactly. So that'll yeah. help you. But um, Aurora, you can also, um, when you get signed up, you, you, do get, uh, you do meet our customer service team as well. And those are the guys who know our services backwards. So you can always set up a time with them anytime you need to, to say, hey, um, guys, I'm going into a big SEO meeting and I'm going to pitch SEO. I'm going to pitch this whole campaign. This is the five services that are in it. What does it look like from Globinal's perspective if I pitch this? And you can ask them all the technical questions that will prepare you to have those conversations with your clients. So um, hopefully that that makes sense, um, Rory, and and and, um, um, and 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 explains what 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 we're you know that'll help you answer that question. Um, I. Uh, Aya, I love your name. Aya, kick him over. Uh, if you say it quick <laughs> enough, it sounds like a, a quite a funny name, but uh, awesome to have you. Aya, I can't remember where you were from, but nice to have you. Thank you for being here. Uh, and the product has been wonderful. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. I appreciate you saying that. Yeah, the copywriting team is great. That's my. That's the team that I, I put together. So I'm very proud of them. Um, good to hear. But we'll definitely, Richard, as I say, please send me an email and we'll get you sorted on the LinkedIn outreach. Figure that out for you. Um, uh, Kevin, uh, Rory, again, we do brand strategy and digital production. So DM has always been outsourced to another agency. It's a bit new to us. So a bit unsure what we should be asking the campaign ideas pulling from them. So um, got you. So you're not used to digital um, digital marketing. So you're looking actually for a strategy piece. So look, I think, you know, even if, if, if you're interested, a, a guy like Dave might be somebody who you could chat to about helping with that sort of strategy piece if you're interested, um, just so that you can help get a better understanding of digital marketing. You can talk to our to our heads of department, our SEO guys and all that, but again, they don't do strategy, they just do the fulfillment. But what you're saying there is, is well known to digital businesses or businesses that are starting to do digital. There is a there is a gap between, hey, we've always done branding, we've done digital, we've done video, never done digital before. Now we have to, having to put these weird strategies together that include SEO and TikTok and this, that and the other. Um, how do I go about it? So if you're interested, we can definitely hook you up with an uh, introduction to a coach or Dave, you can chat to. Um, we've got people, depending, I can't recall where you're at either, but we've got people all over the world that we can hook you up with. Um, Sam, um, uh, is Global looking into how Web3 and Metaverse, et cetera, will affect digital marketing moving forward? Any of us, how we can keep up to date on the latest social platform? digital technology that will affect how digital marketing work, uh, works will change. So Sam, what I'd say is check and make sure you keep an eye out on our blogs. We're always writing new blogs and get into our communities, man. We, um, we're always sharing stuff in our communities around the latest trends and those sorts of things. Um, um, but we, we, we don't, um, we don't, go and build a product around something like the metaverse. We're not going to build something around that just yet because it hasn't been sort of mainstream adopted, if you know what I mean. Um, so we, we, we're we not going to build a product around that just yet until it is sort of a mainstream kind of product. Um, but keep an eye on our blogs, I would say, and keep an eye on our... Um, um, um on our uh, in our community because we, we're always talking about it. and you can ask those kinds of questions our community the cool thing about our community is our, our one community's got 750 digital agencies around the world and our other one's got 3000 plus around the world so you ask a question like that hey guys i need some help on what your ideas are around the metaverse and web3 and, and st stuff like that and start a conversation in a community like that you'll get some good answers there's a lot of opinionated people in there so it's pretty cool 
Um, uh, I haven't Australia focus, David for Australia focus too. Um, cool. Um, yeah, cool. David, David will get in touch with you. That's awesome. Um, yeah, I'm just know. answering. A, you can uh, hit me up by email. I'm seeing you my uh, my personal email, Sam. You can hit Amazing. me up there with a few cool. as well. Rory. Anyone needs any strategy or, or coaching help? Um, yeah, happy to just shoot me an email at dave at josomarketing.com and we can awesome. We can, uh, yeah. Um magnificent um yeah look i think if there's nothing else guys you know we really appreciate you staying over the hour dave anything else you want to add that we've forgotten want to throw I, th I think we're good if anyone's willing to share um we've talked a lot about us and what global does did you guys i would love i'm always willing to hear how we can improve or any ahas or insights about the content we delivered uh is anyone willing to share either unmute yourself or just uh put it in the the q a chat about any ahas or insights, even you know one particular yeah. strategy, one particular thing that really hit home for you guys. Anything? Anything? <laughs> don't, don't, yeah, don't, don't feel pressure. If, if not, that would, that just means we we did an awesome we, job. We so. can do it, you know, and, and, and again, exactly. We probably nailed it. But listen, and you can do it. <laughs> you can do it privately if you want to send us a mail or something like that. We can always do it there as well. Totally. And what I will do just. Let me stop my share for a second, and I will oh, go back. Yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll remove you, best. <laughs> there you go. Uh, there you go. Uh, what I'll do is I just went to the the title slide again, and you can also connect with us here as well. Um, there's our uh, Facebook deets right there on the title screen. Beautiful. Oh, facebook.com slash global or for myself facebook.com forward slash dave albano and uh, you can connect with us uh, as well that way amazing richard took away several cross sell ideas fantastic great value thanks basil awesome guys uh well if there's nothing else well, i want to thank you guys so much for hanging out with us this afternoon or this morning depending on where you are uh and if there's no further questions steve are we good I'm good. Thank you, guys, and thanks, Dave, for, for uh, uh, joining us and uh, you know doing this. This is great, really valuable. Absolutely, I had lots of fun. I love adding value where I can. You guys have been great. Thanks so much for uh, for hanging out. Like I said, and um, yeah, be well. Go forward and crush, and go get some clients by Christmas. Amazing. Thank you, guys. Have a good one. Okay. Take care, everyone. Bye bye.